Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're finally starting to see some faster external SSDs running with USB 4 from major manufacturers. This one is SanDisk's latest. This is their Extreme Pro with USB 4. It is compatible with regular USB equipped computers and tablets and phones, but it also works with USB 4 based devices and it will support data transfers on the 40 gigabit per second standard. And this drive actually performs faster, at least in sequential reads and writes, than many of my Thunderbolt drives do. I was very impressed with the performance, and I'll show you that in a little bit here. It's more of the same from SanDisk from an overall hardware perspective, but that's not a bad thing. These have been some pretty good, solid performers over time. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the drive here came in free of charge from SanDisk. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $279 for a 2 terabyte version. That's what I have here. There is also a 4 terabyte version that sells for $429. At the time I'm shooting this video, I did not see a 1 terabyte version, only a 2 and a 4. But I'm sure at some point, if they can make it work, they'll have a one terabyte version, which I think would be the sweet spot from a price standpoint. But right now, two terabytes looks like it is the minimum. The case on this is very, very sturdy. It's all metal, as you can hear. Uh, and it's got this nice rubberized coating, very similar to some of the prior versions of this drive we have looked at. The size is rather large. As you can see against last year's model, it is significantly larger. And over time, the size of this model has been creeping up, but that's just the nature of the storage that's inside. These typically incorporate a full-size NVMe SSD in order to hit the performance that you're going to see in a few minutes. And this is about the same length to incorporate one of those drives and some protection and a heat sink. This is IP65 rated, which means that it's dust proof and splash proof. It'll probably survive a drop into a bucket of water or something, but it's not designed to be immersed in water over a long period of time, especially when it's on. So if you are out in the field and it's raining, you do want to give it some protection, but if water gets splashed on it or something while it is off, it should be fine. They rate it for like a six foot fall onto concrete, but it feels pretty solid to me. And it also, uh, of course, has no moving parts to it. Now to get the full performance out of this, you need a computer that's equipped with a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port or a computer equipped with Thunderbolt 3, 4, or 5. If you've got that, you will get the full performance that you'll see here in a few minutes, but it will work with any computer or device that supports USB storage. A little bit earlier, I plugged it into an old school 5 gigabit per second USB A port and it worked just fine. Just note though that they don't give you the larger USB A cable or adapter in the box, just a USB Type C cable. So you will have to get yourself a USB C to USB A to use it with some of those larger USB A ports, but otherwise it appeared to be completely compatible to me. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. I've got it plugged into my MacBook Air right now. And the MacBook, of course, has a Thunderbolt port on board, so it can take advantage of this performance. So why don't we start this sequential read and write test, where we're going to write out about 5 gigabytes per second and see how fast it can do it. And as you can see here, the drive is performing exceptionally well. We're getting above 2 gigabytes per second in writes and just over 3 gigabytes per second on reads. And I did let this test run for a bit. I didn't see any substantial performance degradation under load, so it looks like it's able to read and write out to that internal flash drive very efficiently here. So it is delivering on some of its performance promises on the box. They did promise faster uh, write speeds. I haven't seen that materialize in this test, but we did run some other tests with the Crystal Disk Mark test on Windows using a Thunderbolt equipped PC. Let's have a look and see what the results are there. So on my Windows computer, we had write speeds at 3.2 gigabytes per second, substantially faster than what we just saw on the Mac with that Blackmagic speed test. Interestingly though, when I ran that same Blackmagic test on Windows, my speeds were lining up with what we saw here on the Mac. So there might be some, something in the hardware that tends to maybe favor this benchmark over uh, what Blackmagic is doing with theirs. Either way, it's pretty quick and definitely uh, something that will write out data very, very swiftly. Now, if we look on the lower rows here, these are the random reads and writes, and these typically are a lot lower than the sequential speeds on flash drives. 
This drive is a little lower than some of its competitors. So why don't we take a look at this busy chart here and I'll step through some of the numbers that stood out for me. So if you look all the way over here on the right, this is the single threaded write test. And here I got a pretty low score, one of the lowest I've seen in quite some time. And so this is something where if you are booting up an operating system or doing something that's doing a lot of random operations to the disk, you might notice some performance differences between this one and some of the other ones on the market. Of note here, the Samsung X5 with Thunderbolt, uh, this one came out a number of years ago. It did a lot better on some of those random reads and writes, uh, especially on the right side, as you can see here, versus the drive that we're testing today. But compared to the prior generation Extreme Pro, it's certainly doing well and performing better with the exception of that single threaded test. So it's not going to be spectacular in all use cases, but it's certainly going to be considerably faster when you're doing a lot of data movement in and out of the drive. And that's what I typically do with these things. I'm editing video, I'm moving large files back and forth, and those will certainly copy over to this very, very quickly. It's great for backups and dumping out your camera footage while you're out in the field. Now the drive is compatible with game consoles, but there's one caveat for the Xbox Series S and X along with the PS5, and that is that although this drive is super fast with the right connection, your game console has an older USB connection that can't take advantage of the performance that's on this drive. And many of the current generation titles that are written for the S and the X and the PS5 do need faster access to the data. So in the case of the Xbox, you can use the internal storage or get one of those proprietary storage upgrades. The PS5 has its internal NVMe drives that you have to use. So right now, this drive is good for playing some of the older games, like the backwards compatibility mode for Xbox 360 games, Xbox One games that were from the prior Xbox One generation, along with the original Xbox games. And of course, on the PlayStation, the PS4 games and some of the older ones will do just fine off of this, but the newer games will need to be stored on something with a faster interface. Now, it works fine with other devices that support USB storage. I've got my iPhone 16 Pro here. I was able to write a video file out to it and play it back. I did find that the initial connection took a little while for the iPhone to recognize, but after that, all was good here. And this is a shot of my flight instructor and I coming back from one of my training flights the other night. That was him landing it, not me. <laughs> I'm getting there, but this runway is still a little tricky for me. Um, so all in, I think, on the mobile side, it should be fine. Compatibility feels about the same as other solid state drives. So all in, this is a pretty solid offering here from SanDisk, certainly a lot larger than some of the other ones. But if you're doing a lot of high volume data transfers and you have a computer that can take advantage of the performance on this, it's definitely worth considering. They also have a five-year warranty on this drive as well. So that will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.